open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. This is Steiny. When we last left off, I had found out that the beast had been strangled in August, not, quote, had an accident, and that she had been letting the fucking guy that did it back into her life again, even though he had stolen her identity and stalked her through uh, internet-ready devices and made our lives a living hell and made her go crazy. It's fucking nuts. Did she ever report the strangulation thing? Uh-huh. To the cops? She yeah. Did? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, Jesus Christ. But here's the funny thing. He wasn't picked up on it right away. Because she went to the hospital. And he walked away. Mm-hmm. She didn't say shit to the cops so much as she reported what happened at the hospital to a domestic assault victim advocate. So that was mid-October 2021. The rest of October and November. We, my attorney and I kept in vain floating all these different offers to her settlements to avoid court Mm -hmm. and she's just like mediation fell through and all that yeah yeah. and she's like no i'm not going to accept that i want joint custody still and i'm like you're not going to get it why are you dragging this out do you honestly think that when we get to court with all that's going on plus what i just fucking learned that you hid from me for two months and what's going on in your life you still don't have control you think she's gonna go well, I want to give you a chance to get better. Because she's fucking not, dude. You're nuts. The big hang-up in all of this was me asking her to live a life of full sobriety and to not talk to Dumblecock anymore. Mm-hmm. These are two very important things that could keep her on the straight and narrow. And she's like, no, I'm not going to like lose my kids over wanting to have a glass of wine with dinner or something if I'm out. I'm like, you've said that same fucking hypothetical four times now. Are you going out to a lot of fancy dinners and drinking wine with them? No. Well, I'm just, I'm not going to agree to that. Oh, for God's sake. Aren't her kids more important than that? They should be. But she's just like totally self-focused. And all she kept saying is, you're not going to control my life. (laughs) So I'm trying to lay down strict parameters for her to live within for her own safety. And so our kids can have their mom around. And she's only seeing it as me trying to pull her fucking strings like a puppeteer. Like, can't see the forest for the fucking trees. Yeah. People like that, they feel like things affect them. They don't make their own luck. They have things affect them. So it's everybody else's fault. It's never their own responsibility. Yeah, they're very selfish and greedy and finger-pointing. Yep. So because of what transpired in August and what I learned about it in October, you know, two full fucking months later, I started kicking around this idea that she needed a guardian. Like a legal guardian. Okay. Because she's a vulnerable adult. She's not of the capacity to live on her own. And she's not working. She's going to lose her house. She's still buying a bunch of shit on Amazon constantly with very little income. I don't know how she's paying her bills. Maybe credit can go so far, right? Maybe that's what she's doing until that runs out. Something. And I'm like, she needs a guardian and a conservator. Now, I floated the guardian idea way back when she first brought the kids over June 10th. And all she heard me say was guardian. That was the job I was doing at the time. She's like, well, it's not going to be you. I'm like, I wouldn't fucking want the job, you stupid cunt. Why would Mm. I want to be your guardian? Be fucking terrible. But she's so much like so many clients we had when I worked for the nonprofit social work outfit. So I had to tell my attorney's paralegal that as someone who worked as a guardian for two and a half years, I can say objectively, not because I hate her, that the beast is unable to safely manage her own life on a consistent basis and would be better off in a group home setting to help manage her behaviors and her needs because she's barely holding it together. But apparently what we would have had to do was have me and my parents and my wife and anybody else that would join in that all write letters to the judge right. or a judge Asking to get this, this to go before a judge. And even then she can come with a lawyer and say, I don't need this. The burden of proof is on all of us. Again, I would have walked in with 100-plus pages of police reports, plus all these declarations from my attorney, like, look at what's going on here. She is spiraling out of control. And when somebody gets a guardian, you can always be restored to full capacity. That is a legal term. Okay. So every year, there's a review of your guardianship. 
because we have to file the annual well-being report with the courts. Is this like what Brittany had to go through? Yeah, they just called her guardianship was just called a conservatorship because exactly. in a lot just of states it's just that. Yep. In Minnesota, guardian is of the person, conservator is of the yes, assets. Said. Okay. And she could have gone if she was given a guardian every year to try to get restored back to capacity. If you can prove that you've made leaps and bounds of improvement and now are in control of your life, they will restore you to capacity. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. That's too long term for her though. She wants something more now everything is yeah. instant gratification with her it's fucking ridiculous i'm doing good now so give me this back now uh here's a, a good date here december 5th 2021 her aunt's in town from arkansas her aunt went through the same kind of shit back in the day because she was a crack addict her aunt came to town and she was supposed to see the girls the next day but i got a text from her that she decided not to sleep at the beast house due to her constant ranting about me and her mom being out to get her and not supporting her and that her aunt said the beast was quote going crazy and bad mouthing the two of us and you add this to her near constant text to me all the time paragraph in length on average just ranting bullshit she's never satisfied goes off the deep end and if I don't answer her right away then she fucking goes nuts and sends me a chain of like six or seven text messages she's just unstable she knows my schedule I can't have my phone on me in the warehouse And I have three other kids with schedules to consider. But to her, that doesn't matter. It's just like dealing with a dementia patient, basically. And I should know because I had to deal with a bunch of them. Mm. It's like, you say whatever, and it doesn't register. It's in one ear, out the other. They only can think about what they can actually grasp and recall. They're hyper-focused on that because that's the only means of control they have amongst all the other fugue states or, you know, fog. Jumping a month and a half ahead to January 21st, 2022. We're finally in this year. Court, motherfucker. Finally. Right? It took a year to get here, and holy Jesus, was it a shit show. And, okay, so here's how it started out, and I knew her attorney was going to be on this This is still via Zoom, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I knew her attorney was going to be on the super defensive. And my attorney starts out by asking me, you know, when we were together and when we broke up. And I just said, uh, we broke up right after Memorial Day 2013 because I found out that she had been cheating on me with her other kid's dad. Objection. Don't Relevance. And I'm like, day. ah, Christ. And don't the judge that. is kind of like, we don't need to know that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I wasn't like trying to sling mud. I thought it was an important contextual detail. So right out of the gate, I'm like, fuck. And uh, I will add that at this point, my wife had moved out five months prior. Mm. things weren't great between us. Sure. And she's there to kind of support me, but also doesn't want to hang around for this because she's not sure if she's going to be called as a witness Ah, or okay. not. Yeah, there's a whole different level of stress involved for her. And yeah. I want her here to powwow in real time in person if there's a recess or anything. But um, her attorney just keeps trying to object to so much of what I've tried to explain about the beast. behavior patterns and continued drug usage. And she cuts me off before I can say, you know, the beast told me. She keeps saying, well, objection, speculation, objection, hearsay. It's like, it's not hearsay. Your client tells me a lot of things, more than she should. And she says, I'm afraid you're going to use it against me. And I am because this is the truth. The entirety of the record, the totality of the circumstances must be considered here. So how dare you sit here and basically try to sanitize the fucking record? You know, honestly, it's like she was trying so hard to keep so much off the record officially. Well, that's what the lawyer's job is to do here at this point. And I wanted to be like, you know what? Can we stop with the gratuitous objections here? If you have a problem with what I'm saying, address it with your client and cross-exam. But I didn't because I thought the judge would get pissed at me. Right. Because again, she asked me about the adult court documents and it was like, you're arguing with her. I'm "I'm not. I'm just, I find it a curious choice of words. Anyways... One thing that her lawyer tried during the hearing, and I knew this was going to come up, and uh, she called my mom to inquire about what was going on with my personal life between my wife and I. The lawyer called your mom? Cold called her to dig dirt. And my mom's like, well, that's between them right now, so I can't really Scroll say one for your mom. Wow. Well, she did tell her a few things. I don't remember off the top of my head what it was, but it was enough to piss me off that she didn't immediately sure. hang up. Yeah. You know? She's just like, well, I just know that she's not living there right now, but it's not what you think. 
which is enough to give her, you know, an opening to fucking make shit up. Right. And when she brought that up in court, I was just like, you bitch. Because she's like, who currently lives in your house? Like, it's me and our daughters. But right now, uh, my wife and the other children are living with her parents again. But I just want you to know that it's not because of instability in my home. Right. All right. Her father is 81 and has Louis body dementia and is fall prone. She helps with her dad because her mom can't manage it by herself. Who else lives there? Her 41-year-old sister with Down syndrome who also needs help with care. She's doing a lot to hold down that front in addition to helping me hold down this one. So I'm sorry if you thought that there was something going on where the house was not stable, but it is. Gotcha, bitch! And then, of course, the you know the CPS lady went to bat for me quite well, but also, you know, oh, the girls are doing really well because of his wife. So I really hope they can work it out. So it was like, you know, dagger. And then my lawyer's asking me questions. Mm -hmm. And he's asking me like very unspecific ones like, oh, like in this point of the year in 2020, you know, what were some of your thoughts? And he prepped me ahead of time with like, oh, yeah, just study your declarations, like the emails and stuff. You sent me some of them and we'll go with that. And then we'll just, I'll ask you that. Like he didn't ask me specific enough questions. I had to stop him a few times, but can you ask me a more pointed question? Because I felt like it sounded like I was bullshitting my way through it until I had these aha moments where I'm opening up old fucking Word documents and pouring through those months and these notes just to remind myself. So it was pretty fucking stressful when it didn't need to be. And then, you know, he took his turn with her and she looked like a fucking monkey. And then, you know, her lawyer took a turn with her and then the judge wanted to say some things. Go on. So the judge let her have it. She scolded her for fucking up continually and getting worse, not better. Even nice. though she completed treatment, she's still right. like a mess. Yep. And that she'd render judgment soon. And she had 90 days to do so. Okay. Which so I'm you like, could be getting a judgment in anywhere from three to... or One week to four months from now, basically. Yeah. Fucking A. And is hell waiting. Yeah. But I honestly think the judge was just trying to give her more time to fuck up. Yeah, hang if yourself. Playing the averages. Yeah, yeah, give her more time to hang herself. Yeah. So now we're at February 23rd, 2022. Uh, the Beast had been on a tear and was talking mad shit after the custody hearing. It, just so pissed. Like, you're not going to win. You're not going to win. You lied. You and your attorney lied. And we're going to sue you guys. And we're going to get you. You know, shit like that. And her text and behavior were agitated all the time. And I'm like, she fucking totally relapsed. She had to have. And I asked her for a UA, and she refused to accept my, quote, reasonable suspicion based upon her attitude, her behavior, like the the crazy ranting text messages. And then she's like, I can't afford it. I don't have time. She wasn't ordered to do so. It was just a recommendation of what I wanted in the long run. If it's positive, she pays. And she goes back to supervised visits and starts over a four-week cycle of visits. <laughs> yep. And then four weeks of one overnight. Basically and four weeks right of two back overnights. to square one, right? But if it's negative, I pay. Okay. So, so it's a gamble. The judge well, is then... like, I think that's a good idea to do that. You should play ball until I render judgment if it becomes final. Okay. So, Well, at least then you can go back after this to the court and say, hey, she didn't. She didn't submit to the UA like I asked. Yeah, so I asked her and she kept saying she didn't have time. She didn't even know where she'd go. She hasn't been working. She doesn't have all these excuses. She's like, why do you get to decide what's reasonable suspicion? I'm like, I'm the one who is suspicious. I lay out all of the reasons why to you. If we have to go through the lawyers, fine. It's a waste of fucking money. But I'm I'm justified here. Mm -hmm. You think you are. I'm like, oh, fuck off with your mental gymnastics to try to get around this shit. And, um... During this time, I'm getting calls from my attorney. He's like, we haven't heard yet, but I'm still confident that you're going to get what you want. But because of that UA, I again had to contact the CPS lady okay, and say, here's what's going on. I want a UA. The judge told her she should do this, but she doesn't have to, and she won't. She's like, okay, well, you contacted me. I have note of it. Yeah, I was going to say that's about it, right, at this point. So now we're beyond the trial And uh, the CPS lady had closed her case because we had gotten to trial. We were going to get the resolution soon. And we had enough implements in place to kind of guide us. She Mm -hmm. didn't need to be there anymore. March 30th, 2022, 3.05 p.m. uh, CPS calls me and they leave me a voicemail that they need to talk to me. 
I leave her a voicemail because she's already gone home because I didn't get out of work until like five o'clock. Yeah. So the next day, uh, I was able to touch base with this new lady. Oh, who uh, told me about the arrest of Dumblecock at the Beast's home on March 25th. So just like the week before. Yes. And this fits the pattern of the Beast concealing things until she's forced to tell me or somebody else does. So I was told that uh, the local PD contacted CPS and mentioned suspicions of meth usage. And I was informed that the CPS lady would visit her home the next day, April 1st, to meet with her to put a safety plan into action. Why does she need a safety plan into action? The suspicion of meth was this. Uh, somebody called the cops. Somebody, not me. Okay. Yeah. I didn't learn who it was until, you know, months later. It was actually one of her best friends who was pissed at her Good. at the time. Said that uh, he was there in violation of the Danco that was still in order because he hadn't gone to trial on that yet. Mm-hmm. And when they got there, they asked if he was there. She said yes. They went in to talk to him to verify it was him. And while they were down in her bedroom in the basement, it was hazy. And there was paraphernalia that mm-hmm. the officer said was consistent with methamphetamine use. Of course. So that's why CPS was contacted. And I got to say, the cop that uh, gave her statements in the report about all that she saw when she was down there, mwah, chef's kiss, fucking wonderful narrative. It was so damning. I'm like, you dirty bitch. We just went to court two fucking months ago. We're waiting to find out what's happening. This is what I was waiting for, for you to fuck up again. Glorious. And and that's what had happened. So another fucking safety plan. And I got the specifics. And then I went and I also got a copy of the report. And then I called where he was arrested before Mm -hmm. or the incident had been called in before for the strangulation. I got that report. I got a copy of his booking photo and I gave this shit to my attorney and he's like, okay, I think we're going to have to craft another emergency order. Okay. Right. We're still waiting to fucking get the answer on the regular order. Right. But right now the situation's just become emergent because your girls are going to stay there and we assume she's had meth in the house. And doing it in the house. At this point, there's proof of it, right? And while I'm talking to him, I'm like, oh, shit. He's like, oh, shit, what? I'm like, that day, she went and picked the kids up from school. Right after the cops left. Like, I'm piecing it together in my head. I'm like, I didn't know about any of this shit, but she had picked up the kids for me to get from her because I didn't get to work in time before they got out of school. So she was probably still fucking high and went and drove with them. Are you picturing it? I'm picturing it. It's just a fucking nightmare. So she knew that she was fucked, obviously, because the cat was out of the bag on the arrest that she had been hiding from me. And she called me while I was on my lunch break at work one day. Okay. And she's like, can we talk? I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever. We're on the phone. Let's go. She's like, no, I mean like real talk. And she had this weird, serious tone, almost like she was having a very clear moment that it's time to come clean about some shit. And she admits to me that she had been using, like I had suspected, back when I requested the UA, and she had been doing it on weekends when I had the girls, so that there was no issue with her being on it or coming down when they were around, but still, she had been using. So I told her, I'm like, no shit, Sherlock, I fucking knew about that, which I then rolled into my report to my attorney as we crafted this new emergency order. Point being, she said she wouldn't fight it. Oh! And that's where I'm going to end this one. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the what do we call it podcast, I'm J-Man. I'm Steiny. And that's the end.